Okay, so in this video we want to show that this cubic polynomial here intercepts the x-axis between minus 5 and plus 1. And what we want to do is find that x-intercept and then also we want to find the turning points of this cubic polynomial. So when we get a question like this, when it's on this interval here with the round brackets, minus 5 and plus 1, it's indicating that possibly minus 5 and plus 1 are solutions for this cubic polynomial. So first of all, let's just check that's the case. So f of minus 5, let's try that one first. So then we've got minus 5 cubed plus 6 times minus 5 squared plus 3 times minus 5 minus 10. So let's just substitute in x equals minus 5 into our cubic. So minus 5 cubed, that's minus 125. 6 times minus 5 squared, well minus 5 squared is 25. 6 times 25 is 150. And then 3 times minus 5 is minus 15. So I just put in minus 15 there, and then the minus 10 we bring along. So minus 125, minus 15 is minus 140, minus 10 is 150, and plus 150. So this gives us zero. So minus 5 is a solution to this cubic. So now let's try the other one. So f of 1, which is potentially the easier one to calculate. So then we've got 1 cubed plus 6 times 1 squared, plus 3 times 1 minus 10. Okay, let's go on, on these. So we've got 1 plus 6 plus 3 minus 10, and quickly you can see that that is also 0. Okay, so if we're trying to factor out our f of x, let's just try and get a picture for it. Our f of x, got minus 5 is the solution. So we can write that as x plus 5. We've got plus 1 is a solution. So now we've got x minus 1. So now we've got something to go in here, which we don't know what it is. And that will give us our x-intercept. So what are we going to put in here? Which linear equation do we need for that? Well, there's many ways we can do this. We could do synthetic long division of this to get us to our polynomial, which will be a quadratic, and then, or we could just take the derivative of this. I'm gonna do synthetic long division on our function. So we know that one is a solution. So using synthetic long division, I'm gonna take my coefficients of my function. So I've got one x squared, six x squared, plus three x and minus 10. So synthetic long division, I just bring this one down to the bottom here, and then I do one times one is one. Add them together, that gives me a seven. Then I've got one times seven is seven, that's gonna go there, so then add these together to give me a 10. And one times 10 is 10, put that in there, add them together, that gives me a zero. So now I've got x squared plus 7x plus 10. Then if I just factor this out, that should give me one of my missing uh, solutions. So if I factor this, I should get x and an x. 10 is 5 and 2 factored out. So to make that into 7, that's pretty straightforward. Okay, well, x plus 5 is already there. So my other one is x plus 2. Okay. Now, just to show you, if I'd have plugged in minus 5, I probably would have got the same solution. So my coefficients were 1, 6, 3, and minus 10. So minus 5, I bring this down with this 1, multiply it together, I get minus 5. Okay. Add them together. 6 plus minus 5 is 1. Minus 5 times, times 1, that's going to give me also minus 5. Add these together, I'm going to get minus 2. Minus 5 times minus 2 is plus 10. 
So then that will be zero. So now I'm going to get x squared plus x minus two. Okay, factor this out. I want two numbers which add up to plus one. So if I have plus two and minus one, so x plus two, x minus one, that will bring me that back. So now I've got x plus two, x minus one, x plus two is here and that will give me my other one so that's my x minus one okay so that's my polynomial factored out so my x intercept in between minus five and plus one will be the point at minus two so x equals minus two is my missing intercept okay next i need to find the turning points okay so what i'm going to do is take this off the board and then we're going to go on with part two. OK, so first of all, take my function to find the turning point. I want the derivative. So I need f prime of x. Now, as this is a polynomial, I just use the power rule and go along all the terms. So x cubed will give me 3x squared. 6x squared will come down to 12x. And then 3x will reduce, reduce to 3. And the minus 10, that will disappear. Okay, 3x squared plus 12x plus 3. Well, I can see straight away all of these are uh, multiples of 3. So I can divide everything through by 3. So then that could be x squared plus 4x plus 1. Okay, well, just looked out a little bit on factoring. So we're going to need the quadratic formula to try and find our solutions of this. So when the derivative is zero, that is where our turning points are. So that's what we're interested in now. So let's just go for that. So we need minus b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. OK, so for this polynomial here, my a equals 1 b equals 4 and c equals 1. So I recommend you do this. It's very easy to make a mistake when dealing with the quadratic formula. OK, so minus 4 plus or minus square root b squared. So that's 16 minus 4 times a times c. And then that's all over 2 times a, which is 2 times 1. OK, so we've now got minus 4 plus or minus square root. 16 minus 4, that's 12. And divide that by 2. OK, so thirds with square root of 12. Well, 4 times 3 is 12. So square root of 4, square root of 3. So that's square root of 4, square root of 3, which is 2 root 3. So now I'm going to put that in, in here. So minus 4 plus or minus 2 root 3 all over 2. So now I've got multiples of 2 everywhere. So now I've got minus 2 plus or minus root 3. So they will cancel out. And then this one obviously becomes the minus 2. OK, so these are my values for my x. And that would be my turning points. They're my solutions. OK. So... Let's see if we can find out where those turning points are. OK, well, if x equals minus 2 plus or minus square root of 3, then I've got two different values. So for x equals minus 2 minus root 3, let's plug that into our quadratic. So this is looking a little bit intimidating, but let's go for it. Minus 2 minus root 3 cubed plus... 6 times minus 2 minus root 3 squared plus 3 times minus 2 minus root 3 minus 10. OK, well, it looks like it'd be easy to start from this side, but I can see here I've got minus 2 minus root 3 squared. Let's just do a little bit of a work down here to try and make that easier. Minus 2 minus root 3 squared. So minus 2 times minus 2, that will give me 4. Minus root 3 times minus root 3, 
that will give me positive 3. Then I've got minus 2 times minus root 3, which will give me 2 root 3. And I've got 2 of those, so that's going to give me 4 root 3. So I've got 4 root 3. So then that would just reduce to 7 plus 4 root 3. So I can substitute that into there. I can factor this one out and I could do this one here. So let's just put that in there. Multiplying this by 6, so I've got 6 times 7 plus 4 root 3 plus, well I've got 3 times minus 2, so I'm going to write that as minus 6 and minus 3 root 3 and then minus 10. And then this one to cube it, I'm just going to square this one again with this one one more time. So I've got now 7 plus 4 root 3 times minus 2 minus root 3. Okay, let's see what we got here. So I've now got 7 times minus 2, so that's minus 14. 4 root 3 times minus root 3. Well, the root 3 is just going to multiply together to give me 3. So then I'm going to have 4 times minus 3, so that's going to give me minus 12. So that gives me minus 26. And then I've got 4 root 3 times minus 2, so that's going to give me minus 8 root 3. And then I'm going to have another 7 here times minus root 3, so I'm going to have minus 15 root 3. So minus 15 root 3s. So then minus 14 and minus 12, that gives me minus 26. So let's just put that straight in there. So I've got minus 26, minus 15 root 3. Okay, let's get rid of the brackets. So now we've got minus 26, minus 15 root 3. Uh, this is added. So plus 42, plus 24 root 3. Minus 6, minus 3 root 3, minus 10. OK, now let's just get all the normal numbers together without the square root, and then get all the square roots together. So minus 26, plus 42, that's 16. Minus 6 is 10, and then minus 10, that gives me 0. So that's looking good. OK, so that's no numbers there all together. So now minus 15 root 3 plus 24, so that gives me 9 root 3. Minus 3 root 3, that gives me 6 root 3. OK, so at x equals minus 2 minus root 3, y equals 6 root 3. OK, so that's my first intercept. At minus 2 minus root 3, y equals 6 root 3. OK, so I'm going to write this up on the top of the board and take this off and calculate the other one at plus root 3. OK, so now I've done my intercept at minus 2 minus root 3 to get minus, so to get positive 6 root 3. So now I've got to plug in here minus 2 plus root 3. So I've written out my polynomial here with minus 2 plus root 3 in all of my inputs there for my x. OK, now let's try squaring this all out again. So this time I've got minus 2 plus root 3, minus 2 plus root 3. OK, minus 2 times minus 2 gives me plus 4. Plus root 3 times plus root 3, that gives me plus 3. And then I've got minus 2 times a root, minus 2 times this root 3, and this minus 2 times that root 3. So that will give me minus 4 root 3. So that will give me my squared term. So that then simplifies to 7 minus 4 root 3. Now to find my cube term, I just need to multiply this by this. So now I've got 7 minus 4 root 3 multiplied by minus 2 plus root 3. OK. 7 times minus 2, that's minus 14. Minus 4 root 3 times root 3. The root 3s will obviously cancel out to become 3. So then minus 4 times 3 is minus 12. So that takes care of that. And then 4 root 3 times minus 2, that's giving me minus 8 root 3. 
and then I've got a root 3 times 7 is 7 root 3. So then that's going to give me 15 root 3. OK, minus 14 minus 12, that gives me minus 26 plus 15 root 3. Now let's plug all this into our calculations. So this term here is this one. So minus 26 plus 15 root 3 plus 6 times this term squared, which was that. 7 minus 4 root 3 plus, now let's multiply everything by 3 here. So that then becomes minus 6 plus 3 root 3 and then minus 10. Okay, let's deal with all the coefficients that are integers. So minus 10 and minus 6 is minus 16. And oh, we still need to do these ones here in this bracket. So let's just do one more line. 1, 15 root 3, plus 42, minus 24 root 3, minus 6, and plus 3 root 3, minus 10. Okay, now we're ready to deal with the integers. So minus 10, minus 6, that's minus 16, plus 42 is plus 26, and minus 26, again, that all disappears, no whole numbers. Now what about 15 and root 3? So 15 root 3, minus 24 root 3 is minus 9 root 3, and then plus 3 root 3, so that gives me minus 6 root 3. So this equals minus 6 root 3. Okay, so now I know my second intercept. So now intercept 2. is at minus 2 plus root 3 and my y coordinate is minus 6 root 3. So that's the coordinate of my turning point. So let's take this bit off here. Let's just draw a quick sketch of what could happen with this graph. Okay, so let's draw my axes in here. So that's my x, this is my y. Now my Intercepts on the x are minus 5, plus 1, minus 2. So minus 5, minus 2, and plus 1. So that's the bit where it's going to touch the graph. So now we need to work out, does it go this way, or does it go this way? Well, as we've got our intercepts, we've got 1 at minus 2, minus root 3, and that's at 6, root 3. So this is the lowest value, and that's at 6 root 3. Now 6 root 3 is approximately 10.392. 6 root 3 is approximately 10.392. And obviously the negative version is the negative of that. So that's going to be a turning point somewhere up here. So that's going to be somewhere there. And then the other turning point, which is at minus 2 plus root 3, so that is just going to be almost before the y line. So it's going to be somewhere close to it here. That is at minus 10. 0.392. Okay, so therefore my graph is going to go something. So that's going to go something like this. I'm going to come down here. And then go off there, off to infinity. And same here, go off down to negative infinity. So this is a rough sketch of what happens with my function. Okay.